The following is an original audio series from Sierra International Machinery, Pile of Scrap, with your host, John Sacco. Hello, 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 and we're back at it for another episode of Pile of Scrap, and I am with Greg Brown. How you doing, John? Greg, thanks for coming on. Good I appreciate to see you. it. Good to see you. You're kind of a celebrity these days yourself. We try, we try. <laughs> we're trying to communicate. Well, and I think that's great, and I, you know... That's the thing I like about doing this podcast is I've, I've got a lot of different people, different perspectives. So, Greg, a lot of people may know you, may not know you. So give us a little bit of background, Greg. You're the owner of Bin Lee. Yeah. And Bin Lee does? We build roll-off trucks. We do roll-off trailers. We're known for trailers, okay. open-top gondola trailers, and lugger trucks. Okay. A couple other things. They still use lugger trucks. They still use lugger trucks, believe it or not. We bought Huge Hall, which was actually purchased from Heil. Okay. So Load Lugger is actually our trademark name. All right, fantastic. So Bentley's in the lugger business. All right, so before you got into that, you were in the I was car. a GE corporate guy, and a GE corporate guy got me into the automotive business. Okay, so what did you do? I was the automotive guy for Chrysler, for GE. So what so did everything you do? everything from you... financial services to, at the time we did headlights, we did plastic bumpers and fenders, we did the blower motors, and at the time, semiconductors. <laughs> And then I ended up in a series of other manufacturing companies and parts companies in automotive after I left GE. So how did you get into Bin Lee? How, how all of a sudden you now are going to start making trailers for scrap and for recyclables, waste? How did you get into that? I was playing investment banker, trying to raise money for a doctor. And some guy comes in and says, by the way, I got some company for sale. You may be interested. I bought it with a home equity loan. <laughs> True story. You bought Home it right. Loan. You bought it right. I then. bought it right. Yeah. I bought it. I bought Unless it was a bank. $20 million mansion. Right. Now, it no. was, uh, bought it right. Outside of Detroit, right? Outside of Detroit. Right by the airport. Right by the airport. Nice little company. How do you find Detroit today? I mean, I've been there twice in my life, and I find it a modern-day Rome. Detroit's coming back, but it's still very centralized, John. Still very centralized. How's the uh, labor pool there? Terrible. We are struggling. Struggling with getting welders. If anyone is listening, if anyone's listening, we're hiring welders. <laughs> ben Lee, give us a call. You we know, need welders. You're Pay good. You're, you're not alone. I think, you know, that um, the, our, well, all industries, we're, you know, labor is a big issue. Let's talk about a, this. Right? It's a big problem. Okay. And you're kind of passionate about this labor thing as well. You're, you're troubled by the lack of economic growth. Correct. If we have more economic growth, where are we going to find the labor for this? <laughs> we should loosen up immigration, John. And um, immigration, you have to have legal immigration. You have to have security immigration. You have to be safe on who you bring into the country. But we need more immigration to help with growth. And we need better training. We need training. Well, I'm a son, I'm a son of an immigrant. Right. Okay. Um, so I understand that. And I agree with, you know, we have to have it. But I'll tell you, we're... With unemployment the way it is now, we're almost at the bottom of the barrel. The people Where not the people who aren't employed, a lot of them aren't very employable. That's correct. And, and therefore, they need to be trained. And we have a big problem with early childhood intervention because a lot of these kids are getting off on the wrong track. And a lot of the labor force is really problematic. And, and, that, and you being an so close to Detroit and, and all that, you've probably seen that. Well, not only have I seen it, I saw it actually more when we owned the scrapyards in North Carolina. I was held up, right? A couple of guys. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Let's not jump ahead of that. This so. No, but I'm saying I've seen really tough situations and people uh, really struggling. So, Binley, you've grown it. Yeah. All over North America. Do you sell into Mexico as well? We sell into Mexico, uh, Canada, Ecuador, Excellent. Aruba, uh, Hawaii, which is well, the United Hawaii States. Well, Hawaii is the United but, States. But I'm saying you got to get all the way over there. We're, we're in Alaska, but all throughout Canada and Mexico. Yeah. Well, fantastic. So you decided that you wanted to be in the scrap business. You were selling your equipment to scrap it. <laughs> right. And so you got into Tell us a little bit about that. You, you, you went to Carolina. Now you're in Detroit. Right. Now you're going to go buy a yard in, in, in Carolina. How's now, that Actually, going? uh... I, I bought one of my customers. <laughs> Did you get a mortgage on your house? Or I, <laughs> actually, I used a mortgage on my house a second time to help buy the scrap garage. True story. You, you, well, see, you were made to be story. a scrap guy. You're a great buyer. There you go. There you and, go. And the money's yeah. always made on the buy, right? It was, a, it was an exciting 11 years. 
Is that how long you own that? 11 years, John. Uh, now, Greg, God. I've known you, and I have a lot of respect for you because I think you're, you're very candid and you're very upfront. But your story about owning a scrapyard, it's fascinating, and you've been wrong. Yeah. Now, let's, let's talk about when I say you've been wrong. You were accused of how many felonies and buying? Quite, quite a few. Quite 26? a few. Uh, I think it was 27. 20 to be honest. Yeah. And what were these charges that they... My manager's people had purchased cars with a passport, a valid passport, from a, a, a non-U.S. person. And the law in North Carolina that we didn't know was that you can buy scrap with a foreign passport, but you can't buy vehicles. There's two different laws we didn't know. We actually had a letter saying that we could use foreign passports. Okay. So what happened? Uh, when I sold the company, they dropped all the charges. Yeah, but, little, but they char- what, tell, tell us about that whole event, wh- what they did. When they, did they arrest you? Come to oh, you? yeah. They well, handcuffed tell us me. about it. Yeah, they, uh, they came in when they handcuffed me and took me away. It was pretty bizarre. It was bizarre for something my manager's people did that we had a, a letter saying we could do. It was really weird. It was, it was really How bizarre. do you not just... Yeah, no, you're they, pissed off. You got to be. It's, uh, it's we, like... we, my team was mad, and, and then they went after my team also. On, we once had a uh, a criminal misdemeanor against one of my people for a twenty seven cent transaction. Let me repeat that: a criminal misdemeanor for a twenty seven cent transaction. You're not a bad guy, but boy, they sure treated yeah, you. Yeah, they right? they didn't like. Okay, us. so you, you sell your company. Yeah. You, you got out why? Because you got tired of it. What what what? You had a good deal. What was it? What did you get? I got out? a good deal. Okay. And it, it was tough because we'd moved to New York, my wife and I, and we were going to Michigan. We were going to North Carolina. Enough was enough. Got a good deal. Time to get out. Took okay. the money. Okay. So you got your money. Got the money. And they dropped the charges. <laughs> and they dropped the charges. Pretty bizarre. Anybody send you a I'm sorry letter? No, no. But no it's apology? Actually, no apology, but it's pretty bizarre that after you get indicted by a grand jury, they drop the charges with one of the reasons you left town. That, that's not, that's, yeah, so that's a, an issue unto itself. You know, I, like I said, I've, I've known you and now. They put that in writing, by the way, that <laughs> the, sold the company it, when they dropped the charges. Yeah, that, see, that, that's nutty. Now, while you own this yard, you yeah. have a story, and I've seen the video, yeah. where you got robbed. Right, right. Uh, it was, tell us a little bit more. I want you to tell the yeah. story because I, I've seen this video and it, to, to this day, it didn't, it didn't feel real when I watched it. I want yeah, you to know a, that. It's a bad but video. But it was real to you. It was real it was real to me. So um, tell us about that. Because this all, is a story. Anyone can see the video. It's a Raleigh Metal Recycling Robbery. Raleigh Metal Recycling Robbery. Uh, ABC News uploaded it. Say that 10 times fast. You yeah, can. Right. <laughs> but what happened was it was 5.02 in the morning and um, a car pulls into the parking lot. I'm opening the door. Unfortunately, I was by myself. It was dark, and a couple of guys come out in my company uniform, and before I knew what happened, there was a gun on my side. And um, they had me uh, go into the back room where there's a door, and behind the door, there was quite a bit of money. Well, scrap metal, we pay uh, cash. Right, there's right, always cash right. in the We safe. had a huge retail business, huge, okay. huge retail business. So there was quite a bit of money behind that door. So somebody knew that. It was an inside job. Yeah, they, we, we know who the inside guy was. It's a long story. Uh, he was never charged. But um, what happened was they thought I was the manager. Because I kind of looked a little bit like him, especially with Stark. And <laughs> I was the owner. I had no key. I had no combination. I could not get them to the money. But they didn't believe it. And uh, what you could see on the video is they're trying to convince me to open the door. And... Uh, I was trying to convince them that they had the wrong guy. And you see a guy on the phone, he, at one point he kicks me. And then I see the second guy that's not on the phone, he's actually trying to get a bolt in the chamber. Cause in the first part of the video that's not online, they shot me in the leg, but they couldn't shoot me because the gun jammed. So they actually took a shot, but the, but it, it, it the gun fire, jammed. the guy the, missed the, the gun jammed. And you see the guy on the video, John, like this. Trying to get a bullet. I saw that video. and it, it, <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. The, the fact that you could laugh about it. Right. Yeah, okay, it's, but it's so bizarre. you're sitting there. 
Well, you were on the ground, weren't you? I was you? on the ground. And he when kicked I, you. I remember he that. He kicked me. And then when I see that he can't get a bullet in the chamber, I get up and I kick his buddy. <laughs> but his buddy was really strong. Grabbed me, throws me into the door, then throws me into the wall. And I end up on the ground again. And you see the guy is still like this, trying to get a bullet in the chamber. It's really crazy. And uh, they gave up and left. And they took my wallet and my cell phone. So they, they tried to shoot the you in the leg. Yeah. After you kicked that guy, and if that round gets chambered, you had no doubt in your mind they oh, the, they're going to the kill you. The police said I was dead man. Yo, they said if the bullet got in the chamber, I was dead man. Yeah. Not That's cr- divine intervention. You know, it was... Uh, I'm sorry, but... It, I, John, it, it's, someone was looking out, out for me. Yeah, I pictured myself in a pool of blood. I thought it was over. I really, I really did. It was bad. I mean, okay, so the video's th- ugly. They leave. They left. And you're sitting there. Yeah. When does it hit you that everything is... Because the adrenaline during the whole thing... When does it hit you, you know, Greg? And do you have nightmares? So okay, here's I'm the, curious here's the, about that. Here's the interesting story. To this day, I've never had a nightmare about it. Never had a, a post-traumatic syndrome. Nothing. Um, whereas I don't mind telling you, because you brought it up before, the cops coming after us, trying to shut us down... That gave me nightmares. That kept me up. That had me lose weight. Yeah, because, because you're because, innocent and you're well, really we're, and we're hated. Yeah. But so these guys are just a bunch of bumbling idiots. So to this day, I've never lost a, a, a moment of sleep. But it's bad. I mean, it, it goes back to that we have a problem in this country where there aren't enough good jobs. People aren't trained for the jobs. They're not trained for the jobs. And they're out trying to kill people <laughs> because literally they would have killed me. Yeah, it was bad. That, you know... It really is. It really is all <laughs> intertwined. That's, I shake my head. Yeah, North Carolina is pretty bad. Big drug problem. A number of the guys that work for me to this day are dead. My manager dead from drugs. Drugs. Drugs are really bad down there. Really bad. Crystal meth. Crystal meth. Big. California. I'm big. in Kern County. Crystal meth capital. Of, of, we call big. it crystal. Yeah. Yeah. And there doesn't seem to be, you know, you and I have talked about this. This yeah. We're kind of getting a little bit off the subject here, but it is part of our culture. And hiring people, okay, Sierra, we have an amazing safety uh, zero tolerance policy. When we right. go to hire somebody, we have, uh, you know, drug testing. Yeah. Just trying to find somebody who passes that test. I'll tell you something crazy. The only... Unemployment claim I ever lost after firing someone, I had to pay him, was in Michigan. The guy had marijuana in his system. He had a medical marijuana card. I was not allowed to fire him. So here's a guy welding. Trailers are flying through the air that we make. We make these big trailers, right? Flying through the air, right, on chains and stuff. You're allowed to have, by law, if a guy is stoned at the place of work, you can't fire him. Oh, it's not bang. Sorry. (laughs) But really? Yeah, see, now that's, that's going to be coming into California. But see, we do um, a lot of work in the oil fields with right. Chevron. And, yeah. and, okay, yeah. you just use that. You know, they're big. And yeah. what was the biggest thing that they want to do? You have to be safe. Right, I understand. Because the deep pockets. Right. I think that's not right. So the issue You should is, have the ability to say whether or not your employee absolutely. can be under the influence. Absolutely, absolutely. But in Michigan, you can't. In Michigan, you literally can't. But, but it gets back to that we need better training. We need better... Early childhood intervention in schools. Uh, we need, you know, the whole family issue is a big issue, and it's hurting the workforce. And it's hurting guys who are trying to hire people, pay them good wages, $22, $24 an hour, 20 bucks an hour for a welder. Can't find them. Can't find them. You know, we, we look, we, we're in southern Georgia at our factory at Jessup, and um, it's not easy to find a quality yeah. welder. Yeah. And to keep them. Right. Because they're in high demand. Right. Well, good for them and the respect yeah. that they're, they're going to earn. Right. You know, there are a lot right. of quality jobs. You know, you pay somebody 25 bucks an hour without overtime, that's over $50,000 a right. year. You know, and not, we pay 16 hours of overtime in many weeks. Yeah, so and these we still people, can't find people. That's a good paying they, job. They're, they're making a lot of money. We have a good 401k plan, health care. Our 401k plan is dollar for dollar. You put in a buck, I put in a buck. Good for you. It's not a bad deal. No, well, good for you. Well, you know, that's what's made you successful. You, you're a little bit, you said you were, you've been accused of being a finance guy. Right. You, numbers have always been very important to you. You, you know your numbers inside and I out. I try. Of, 
I try. Is that a passion? What is it? Well, is it just, you know, you know it's numbers? Not with my father. My father was an unsuccessful businessman, to be honest with you. He was unsuccessful. So I've always cared about investing properly, investing in my company, investing in my people, and investing in safety. And okay. now, lately, investing in the environment. I said earlier, we just put 500,000 into solar cells and a roof. Okay, so you, you believe that that investment for you is good for the economy because of the environmental, the positive uh, environmental impact solar has, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so, you know, you spent that 600000 but you're going to save money with that, though. The payback is not good. The payback makes no sense. Okay. There, there was, while on paper it was seven years, no. No? Because I could re- get more of my money than that, so. Sure. Yeah. Well, okay, so we're. It was the right thing to do. Oh, and, th- and there's nothing wrong with doing the right thing. You know, in California, we have um, Bakersfield. We have 5.8 inches of rain a year. Now, I've, I've right. said this in a lot of my podcasts. We're spending $600,000 for better filtration for everything. And, but it's what comes off our parking lot. Right. Now, it doesn't ever hit a metal. I understand. Okay. But we're spending $600,000. That's a lot. And you know, you know what the return on the investment is on that? Not getting fined. Correct. I understand. I understand. So you're, 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 you're liable. Yeah. So you're not doing it. But it's the right thing to do. But yet... Our industry gets attacked because Walmart doesn't have to do stormwater sampling. Right. Home Depot doesn't have yeah. to. All the big houses that have their big parking lots with way bigger than Sierra's right. parking lot, they don't have to do that. And what we don't get credit for is that because we're recycling, which, which saves energy, which means less oil being burned, less electricity being used, we're actually helping the environment. Well, yeah, so I we always don't get said, enough the, credit for that. I always said we're the original environmentalist. We are. We are. But somehow, the, the Correct. communication... They, they call us the bad guys. And that drives yeah. me nuts. Yeah. Okay, so speaking, you know, we talked about employment economies. You put out a report. What, it, what's, the, what's the name of it? The Global Economic Commodities and Scrap Metal Report. By, they, I love that. You, you, you sound... You're, you, By Bedley. You're good at it. But we try. How many followers do you have on that? Uh, well, on LinkedIn, I think we have 15,300-something. Fantastic. Uh, we've had as many as about 10,000 people a week watch it. Um, it goes out to about 20,000 people. Do, you, we, do people can sign up for it, Greg? People or? can sign up for it right from the Benley website, uh, just the bottom of the website. But i got to tell you two funny stories. Okay. One is we're at the Isri Show, and two women come up to the booth and say, we want to let you know that we have, we're from New Zealand, and you have a big following People watch your I know program. Who came up in to New you, Karina. And then another guy comes by the booth and he goes, Oh my God, you're Greg Brown. <laughs> and he goes, Hold on a second. And he gets out his phone, he dials, and he goes, Honey, you're not going to believe who's here. And he turns the phone towards me. Some woman is laying in bed and she goes, Oh my God, it's Greg Brown. And you're a celebrity. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. Yeah, well, you know what? You put yourself out there. I'm doing this with podcasts. You're doing a great job. You're Thank doing you. A, he's doing a great job. Doing a great job. You know, but it, it doesn't hurt your business, does it? It doesn't hurt, but it, it's, it helps our customers. We originally started it because scrap fell in February of five years ago. It dropped $90. No one expected it. And one of my scrap customers got mad at me because I didn't communicate to him that it had happened. And that's, that was the origin of why we started the report. So you're out in front of it and... and for people to know, but I think, you know, I've had Jason Shanker on the podcast twice because I think it's relevant, you know, the coronavirus. I just had him, we, we did a, a podcast, we recorded on February 3rd and two days later we released it because it, it was, you know, news that needed to get out there, I feel. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's it's relevant for people to understand, well, what's going on? What, what's driving prices up, prices down? Sure, sure. So, and by the way, just for the record, we start out with... Uh, Steel production in the U.S., then oil price, oil production, iron ore price, HMS number one price, copper price, aluminum price, hot roll coil steel price. So where are you and, going with it next? You know, it's, we're just keeping it. Pork bellies? <laughs> right, right. Uh, we, we throw cardboard in uh, once a month. Okay. Um, That's and, not good. Right. I, I, we handle cardboard oh, at Sierra, we're brother. We're a decade low. We, we were just up a little bit last month, but yeah, it's it a decade low. It's, it's pretty bad. Yeah, but it's and then it's different every week. Yeah, that housing starts, unemployment index, GDP, 
budget deficits. So it starts out the same, and then it's a little bit. All right. So because you're a numbers guy, you're a little. You don't like America's growth right now. Uh, China's, you know, you said six percent growth, right? Um, and slowing. China is slowing, but they're still six. How much is the slowing due to the coronavirus? The, the current slowing, and they were due to be about five eight six this year from six two two years ago. So they've been slowing for years now. Europe. Europe is about 0.1%. Europe's uh, been in trouble for a yeah, long time. Uh, Germany's been hurt hard by the tariffs that we put on China, hurt China. So Germany exports a lot to China, and it hurt them hard. They ship a light. As an example, a lot of Mercedes cars and BMWs go from Germany to China, and that's been hurt dramatically. What do you see in the next, next year? What do you see later for 2020? Well, the U.S. is due to grow at around 2 to 1, could be 1.8. Um, the administration is saying 3.0, but it, it is due to be about 2 to 1. Okay. And um, we'll probably see another tax cut. Uh, that'll help. The problem is that the debt is enormous. The, the debt is something that, there's, to me, there's almost no fix because there's no program that could ever be cut. Right. So what you need is... You do need to grow the economy faster. You do need to invest strategically, but then you need to cut spending. You do need well, to but cut that, spending. That, you, you know, really do. not to be, look, we're not going to get political here. Yeah. But, no, I, but it's, 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 it's like it's Democrats and Republicans. It, 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 nobody it's, it's wants to cut anything. Correct. That's a problem. That's and, a problem. But the answer is growing faster. And we don't have investing. the employees to grow faster. Well, and unemployment, back to, it's right. back to unemployment. We right. can't grow much faster because where are we going to get the workforce? That's, and you said you got to you got to allow you got to bring them into the country. You got to allow them to come in. That'll help add to the workforce. And you got to train people because only 63.2 percent of people 16 years of age that can work, 16 years of age or older that can work are working. Called the labor participation rate. Let me ask you this. As far as the workforce, the new millennials, we yeah. hear a lot about that. I, I don't hire a lot of young people. Yeah. Um, they don't like manual labor. They do not. They do not. They want to work for Facebook or Amazon. Uh, th that's an issue that we're all struggling with. And they, for whatever reason, don't understand that even being a plumber or a truck driver, you can make good money. A welder, you can make a lot of money. And I think more money, it's just. Walmart last year was advertising $81,000 a year for a truck driving job. I heard on the radio. $81,000 being a truck driver at Walmart. That's good money. <laughs> Isn't that middle class? That, that's, uh, well, no, it's more than middle class. I think the average family of four makes 50 some odd thousand dollars. So it's... These are good paying jobs. I, I, yeah. I think somebody needs to reach these young people to understand, look, Amazon, Google, and all that, they're not the long-term answer for better, better income. You can actually learn to trade, truck driving, welding, right. what have you, plumbing. Right. You can make a lot of money. Right. But you got to use your hands. Right. And some of the top-end jobs at Amazon, uh, trust me, at Apple, they pay a lot of money, the top jobs, you know, the engineers. Sure. But, but uh, you working go to in a warehouse at, at Amazon, you know, it's 15 bucks an hour. It's not bad, but it's not, you're not going to have a family of four on that. Uh, you're not going to raise a family. So, you looking forward to the Israel Convention? I am. I am. We'll be there. Think? What do you uh, think? We're going to have a good show? I think we'll have a, a pretty good show. Vegas is a great place. It's a place where if you're a scrapyard, in one day you could see almost every vendor, whether it be hardware or software. Uh, Sierra's going to be there. Ben Lee will be there. We'll have now, are you going to Waste, Ex Waste Expo? We're right? going to Waste in New Orleans. We were just at the WET show, which is the pumper show, yesterday. Okay. Actually, my team is still there today. You, do you do Con Expo? We don't do Con Expo. We're not. We're going big, to Con Expo. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. You'd be surprised. Yeah, maybe one of these days. But we have a lot of trailers in the scrap business, a lot of trailers in the environmental business, especially yeah. our two-box trailers. <laughs> Very popular. Very it's popular. Become, no, it's Wait, become a huge. We have people yesterday just clamoring around it. I mean, it was. All right, so manufacturing, you're out of the scrap business. You want to get back? Out of the scrap business. You want to get back in it? Do you like uh, it? You love the scrap you know, business, Greg. I, 
I've been offered a couple of times. I've been offered a couple of times. I, I'm, I'm, not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. So you said you like to travel. So let, yep. let, let, let's, let's move on from what we do from a day to day. But sure. you've been traveling a lot. Yeah, we were in Paris last week. Uh, coronavirus. Uh, my wife loves to shop. Okay. And the high-end stores? Yeah. Empty. Empty. Uh, they said 40% of their business gone last few weeks. My daughter was in Paris last weekend. Yeah, so we were there. She, if she went to the stores, I mean, it's... She it's, doesn't it's, quite have the budget okay, to go into right. the high But it's stores. a big issue. For, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we were in Paris last weekend. We were in Antarctica. Antarctica, I think uh, New Year's Eve we went. Okay. And that was quite the trip. Um, it was really phenomenal. Yeah. Egypt, you said, coming up? Egypt's coming up uh, in a few months. Um, been to Costa Rica lately, actually London, Paris a couple times. I was in Paris three months ago also. So, uh, good yeah. For you. My, my wife likes Why it, get uh, back in the scrap business well, when you can right. travel, there you right? Go. There you go. Well, I got a good team at Bentley. Okay. And, um, but I'm still involved in Bentley on, of course. on a daily basis. And you should be because you're a smart guy. <laughs> uh, well, I try. Not as smart as you. No. You small, know, no, small no. Company, We've argued big. about that many times now. You're a lot smarter <laughs> than me. Well, listen, Greg, I appreciate you spending some time. Good luck to you on Binley. Good luck Thanks. to you on your... Keep your it going at Sierra. I don't know, got to. I got yeah. kids in college there and in high school. Go. I, got I like your electrification, your little uh, Electric- material handling. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Yeah, battery Electrification. Operator. Well, we, we've, we've been successful selling a few of yeah. those. I think there's more to come. Great. Um, you you know, bring a lot of value to the industry. Well, and you are a great chairman of Israel. You are great. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But you know what? You're a great member of Israel. You're always here. You're always participating. We try. Well, that's why we're friends. There you we're go. there here doing the same. We have the same common goals. But thank you for coming on. All right. I Great. appreciate it. Great. Thanks Brother. for having us. And that's it for another episode of Pile of Scrap. This has been a Sierra International Machinery original audio series. Thanks for listening. Please share this podcast and make sure to subscribe.